Apple Music to organize your music for DJ sets and how to use it in Serato and other DJ programs, primarily Serato. And I'm going to start by showing you how to set up Apple Music. And Apple Music used to be called iTunes. You can also do this with iTunes if you have an older version. It's the exact same program. The only thing that changed is the name. And show you how to set it up, how to add music, how to organize it. So to start with, we're in Apple Music. You can't see the menu, but I go up to Music, Preferences, and all we need to worry about is Files. First thing you need to do is choose where you're going to keep your music. I keep it right here on the desktop in a folder called Music. I believe the default is within the hard drive, within the music folder, within the music. It's, it's a nested thing. I like it right there, but wherever you want it, just pick a place. That's where your music's going to live. Make sure you keep check keep music media folder organized checked. Make sure you uncheck copy files. If you have that checked, you're going to waste space because you're going to have two copies of everything. You don't need that. It's just going to basically duplicate it. So as long as that's checked, that's unchecked, and there you go. So once you've set that up, then you've got your music folder. I open that within the folder. You can see I've got at the very top a folder called Add. And if you look, there's a space before the A. I put that there so it's always at the top. Even chick, 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 anything that's alphabetically higher, the space will always supersede that. So the top folder is going to be Add. And then also there's this little weird text file. What is it? It's just an empty text document called exclamation mark. And again, the exclamation mark title is just so it stays at the top. And that's just to keep the folder alive because the way Apple Music works is once you import songs, you could put one song, 10,000 songs, whatever it is, you put your music in here, you drag it into Apple Music, and this folder will disappear if it's empty. So by keeping that there, it just keeps the folder in existence. I'm going to close this for a second. So back to Apple Music, I have my different playlists. I have one here called Unfiled. And these are songs that I've bought or copied from records, whatever. These are basically songs that are kind of new to the collection. I haven't really decided yet what I'm going to do with them, where they belong. Now, if I were to simply drag a song in there, that would be the wrong way. Because what would happen is this song would stay there on the desktop. It would not be part of the actual Apple Music collection. So uh, it's it's just bad. You, you would be unorganized. If instead I open this, go to the add folder, and I put this in there, now when I drag this into Apple Music, which I will do in a second, it's going to organize it. It's going to keep it in the collection. But watch what happens. So I drag this here. I drop it there. And it disappeared. Where did it go? Well, if we were to go all the way down to Yankovic, in fact, let's do it the quick way, Yank. Nope, that's the bad way. Yankovic. Um, we would see that it's now in there. It actually, Apple Music, when I did that, it created this folder. It didn't exist before. It created a folder called Yankovic Weird Al. Looks like I've got another one. I may have to merge those. There's probably some punctuation change. It created a folder for Bad Hair Day, the album, and it put that song in there. It organizes it automatically. You don't need to do any of that. By checking that box in the preferences, and if also... If for some reason, like, let's say I realize Amish Paradise is actually on the Good Hair album, which there's no such thing. But if I change that, notice that in here, now it's Good Hair. It updated that instantly. But as we know, it was a bad hair day. So that's why you want to keep it organized. And had I, oops, I, see, I made a mistake. I didn't capitalize. See, these are the kind of things you... This is why it's good to have Apple Music. Um, had I dragged it straight from the desktop, none of this would have been there. It would have not organized anything. It would have just kept it on the desktop. So always, that's kind of your intermediary step. You get new music. You open the music folder. You open your ad folder. You put it in there. You drag it in. And then it will sort it all where it belongs. It will create folders as needed. It will just do everything for you. Now we've got Amish Paradise here in our unfiled crate. So I go in there and you can see I've actually already, 
I didn't have any new new music for this video. I've already done this, but see kids hits in the comment. That's my own invention or my own addition. So everything else here is just these are the facts. It came out in 1996. It's track one of 12. These are all the accurate things. It's 81 beats a minute. Um, the comments section in the ID3 tag is incredibly valuable. Without it, it would be impossible to do this. But I use it to divide the music into crates. So I, I can sit, I know that grownups like this too, but primarily it seems like kids want to hear Word Out. So I put it in my kids hits playlist and I know to look for it. So it's not like if a 30 year old man comes up and asks for it. I'm like, I don't know where to find it. it will, no, it's that's where it lives. Um, but maybe I could also have you know, 30 year old hits. That, that, that crate doesn't exist, but if I had that crate, and I'll show you how to create these crates in a second, but I could create a bunch of crates. It could be hip hop. It could be comedy. It could be dance favorite. If I found that everybody like oh, any, I could put it in as many crates as I want. And the commas are, optional but i find it, it's you know looking at it like that it's very clear to me that it's in numerous crates this long string would be confusing as hell like i want to know what the hell i was looking at there so um i put a comma after each crate and so if you're asking what's a crate i'll get to that next but basically i use the comments section to organize it with my own within my own dj crate system my dj crate system lives up here so i've got um a folder called DJ Crates. Within that folder, it looks like there's 3,767 songs. 367. There's just too many. There's way more than you'd play in one day, but it'd take you 10 and a half days to play them all. But that's basically all of the songs that I use for any capacity of mobile DJing. I've also, you can see, I've got some nightclub crates. I've got these breaks and beats when I do. There's different types of parties I do, but for like mobile work, DJ Crates, but if I open that, it's a folder, and you can create folders up with a uh, file. You can't see, but new playlist, smart play, new playlist folder. You create these folders. Um, and I've got subfolders. I've got my DJ crates. I've got cocktails and dinner, and I've got dancing. I also have these three playlists that are just right in the top crate. I'll get to those at the end. I'll explain why those exist. But um, So cocktails and dinner is a subfolder. Within that, there are four more subfolders ceremony cocktails dinner reception and then dancing has i believe seven one two three yeah seven subfolders um and then the reason i'm nesting them this way is so with cocktails and dinner i don't necessarily need those to mix with the dancing crates i would not play cocktail songs during dinner or if i did that cocktail song would live in the there are some examples there are some like slightly dancey pop songs that are in a cocktail crate that are also in a dance crate but they can be in two different crates. That's the nice thing. It's like with records, you'd have to buy two copies of the record to keep it in two crates. With digital files, you can keep it in as many crates as you want with just one song of one copy of the song. And so the cocktail, so for example, ceremony, I've got a pre-ceremony list. Classical is exactly that, classical music. Classical covers is things like the Vitamin String Quartet, where it's sort of these modern pop songs covered in sort of like a classical way and then pop music that's just straight up pop music these are all the songs i play while people or guests are arriving people are sitting down the ceremony hasn't started yet just kind of like the background pre-ceremony music and then classical ceremony this no one even wants this anymore these you know here comes the bride these are the three songs that used to be played at every wedding that basically never get played at weddings anymore but i have them there just in case because once in a while maybe someone's going to want the actual wedding song. I've got this kind of, I, I'm in Texas, so country speak here. I've got this uh, kind of country version of the wedding march that I have played at weddings. Um, but that's kind of the ceremony. And then cocktails, same thing. I've got 80s pop, 90s hits, acoustic, alt country, bachelor pad music, Christmas for holiday parties, Christmas parties, classic rock. These are all the different crazy. When I'm playing a wedding, I'm mixing during the cocktail hour, during the dinner hour, just the same as I am during dinner. I'm going through crates. I'm going through playlists. I'm mixing the music. I'm reading the crowd. I think it's a great time to kind of build a rapport with the audience and really sort of get a sense for what they're into. I know some some of you might just put on a Spotify playlist, but I do it this way. So I've got crates and I'm treating it just like the dance portion. And so I've got in cocktails and in dinner, I've got all these different crates. Um, 
and then I'll, I'll get to reception in a second. But for, for example, I'll show you. So like in the 90s soft rock, these are songs that I might play during, might play during dinner. Um, so if you go to like say Zombie by the Cranberries, if I do Command I, you'll see that I called 90s soft rock. That's in the comments. And if I look here to the rules, comments contains 90s soft rock. Um, that's how smart crates work. If you, let me give you a quick tutorial if you don't. So you go up to File, New, Smart Playlist. When you click this, it brings up this thing and you can choose whatever ID3 tag. We're gonna do comments and it can be contains, does not get, make sure it's contains. Uh, because what you want, like I showed you, if you wanna have, let's say we had something in kids, hits, and 90s soft rock strange song that would be but it could be and so if it was is well then it would have to have that entire phrase to be in this crate so this would only be songs that are both and that's a weird i don't think anyone would want any kind of crate like that but by contains that would be if it has the phrase kids hits oh well, sorry let's get rid of this kid if it has that phrase kids hits all together like that not just kids, not just hits, but kids hits, then it will be in the kids hits folder. If we, let's say we had a folder called hip hop dance. Anything that has that in the ID3 tag is gonna show up in that folder, in that crate. Um, when you go to the ID3 tag, you could put this in there. You could put other things. You could have, let's say we had, so I'm not gonna create this crate, but um, let's say zombie was also a hip hop dance song. I would say 90 soft rock, comma, hip hop dance. Now what's gonna happen when I hit okay, if I, I'm not going to, but if I were hit okay, then the playlist with the rule that the comment contains 90 soft rock would say, okay, that's in there, so it belongs in that crate. Another playlist that is looking for the phrase hip hop dance would say, oh, that's in there. It would put that in that crate. It doesn't have to be just that. As long as the, it says contains, right? As long as the phrase contains it somewhere. Now, if I put hip hop fun dance, suddenly it would not be in that crate because it's looking for the phrase hip hop dance. This has hip hop fun dance. That's not the same phrase. So that is the beauty of smart playlists of these intelligent crates. Uh, if you don't understand any of this, leave a comment or contact me. I'll explain this. I think I've explained this well, but basically any phrase that you can think of that you want to describe a crate, you create a smart playlist, the rule being the comments contains that phrase, then you can add that phrase to any songs you want and it will show up in that crate. And I don't know if any of these um, are in multiple crates, but I'll, I'll eventually find some songs that are and I'll show you kind of a real world example of that. But that way, you know, I have an acoustic crate. So I've got Ryan Adams version of Wonderwall. That's dinner acoustic because this crate is dinner acoustic. Um, and so just every DJ crate you want that has like a category of music, you create a playlist. And what's nice about that is when I'm mixing, I can do a couple acoustic songs and then I can maybe jump into like something mellow, something jazzy, and just kind of navigate through the dinner playlists without, because um, if I just had dinner, 481 songs. 481 is probably, two, I think 100, 125 is about the most you want in a crate, but you could possibly navigate 481. But it would be a little bit tough to decide what's going to go with what because there's a lot of ground being covered here. So I've got my songs that are piano heavy. I've got Motown songs. And I can kind of bounce back and forth from these when I'm mixing. This is way more important during dancing, but it's also, you know, for early on, it's important. And then I showed you this reception. I've got um, kind of some background music for if it's kind of like something is about to happen. Someone's about to give a speech, but there's a lull. Just anytime you need a little background music. And then I've got things like the bouquet, the cake cutting. A lot of times couples will specifically choose those songs, but there have been times when I've been told, oh, we're not going to do a bouquet and then, oh, we're gonna do it. What song should we? Do? So, kind of on the fly, I gotta pick something. Father, daughter, my, you know. Usually, that gets picked once in a while. I've had people decide at the last minute to do it, 
or just never have come up with a good song or say we don't like the song or want to change our mind, help us. And you've got like, like I had a groom come up once where they weren't going to do it. While the father-daughter dance was happening, he came up and said, you know, my mom wants to do this. What song? And so I had to quickly jump in there and we picked a song together. So I had like a 30 second heads up. There's no way I'm going to go through my entire music library. So just bam, mother, son. So those are the reception moments. And that's cocktails and dinner. The dancing crates are more important, I think, for most DJs. And it's really just like, so, you know, country. There's country dance music, country favorites. Uh, I, I'm in Texas, so Texas country, two-step is big here. And each of these is like a playlist of that type of thing. Favorites are kind of like best of the best. If I really want just like a floor packing, like I, I need to like really up the energy, I'll jump into there and pick one that kind of boosts the energy you call it, like your energy crate or your fire crate or something um electronic i've got you know i don't do a lot of electronic here but i do have enough that if i need to jump in there disco house i play more than anything else of this music uh hip-hop i do a lot of hip-hop vinyl djing i also play it at weddings and such not as much but i've got my 80s 80s underground 90s 90s favorites more current stuff by the past couple of decades I'm in Austin, but Houston hip hop is big here. Trap is big here. Um, but okay, but so like, let's go back. For example, 80s hip hop. So I've got, these are kind of like, not that I play a lot of 80s hip hop anymore, but once in a while, there's an older crowd. They want some of those like super old school uh, tracks. And so like, you know, there's Just Ice, Justice. He, he says it both ways. Who knows? Uh, old school rap is what I call this crate, even though it's the 80s. Um, but like, let's see if we can find one that just happens to be in more than one crate as I go through. I think most of these live just here, but there's going to be one or two, I think, that are crossovers, maybe. Maybe not. Well, anyway, you get the idea. So um, these are the different hip hop crates. And so what's nice about this is like, if I wanted to, I can click on hip hop and see all my hip hop songs, uh, 474 songs. But like I said, it's a little unwieldy, but once in a while I might want to. Like, for example, let's say I'm doing uh, 90s hip hop and I'm playing some of these and I'm like, you know, I want to modernize it. I want to kind of jump up a little, but let's just, I can go to all the hip hop and I could see, I probably have it by, um, in, in, what do you call it? In Serato, you have by BPM. I don't really do iTunes by BPM, but um, so let's make it look more like a Serato crate. So if I have it by BPM, if I'm playing, let's say I was playing uh, School Spirit, whatever. And I'm like, hmm, I don't want to do any more of this kind of modern stuff. I look in here and, oh, there's Digital Underground. There's Black Street. There's Too Short. These are all kind of similar BPM, but different styles. Uh, by kind of going to the parent crate, I could navigate at that. So, you know, I'm doing. we were doing the going way back. I could just jump over here and look at the BPM. But sometimes it's nice to see them all because I might be inspired. I might think I'm playing 80s. I want to do modern. I'm going to do 2010s. But if I go to hip hop, I might be like, oh, there's a 90s track that's actually going to work really well that'll kind of bridge into the 2010s. So that's why going back to the parent crate helps. And that's why nesting these crates is important because if each of these was just an individual crate living on its own, you could either see all, of, like you go to like DJ crates, see every crate together, which is just useless or you could just see the individual crate this way you can see kind of groups so there's hip-hop i've got latin mixed genre is kind of it's more about the moment than it is about the style like these could have hip-hop house country everything it's just anything that's a good last dance uh dance starter dance starters are just great first dances or first couple songs of the night line dances obviously they can be all genres uh slow songs same thing you could have a slow soul song, a slow rock song, a slow country song. Um, and then oldies is just that. It's kind of 50s and 60s. And then pop. I figure I started, I kind of start pop in the 70s, but um, whatever your definition of pop is. But like I've got the older pop, which is 70s and some sub crates, 80s, some sub crates, 90s, some sub crates. So like 90s could be the club hits, could be pop, alt rock, Brit pop was big in the 90s. 80s, you have New Wave, you've got that kind of freestyle, used to be called Latin hip hop, 80s pop, 80s funk. Um, favorites are always where I kind of drag, there's like a handful of like, not sure what to play, just losing the dance floor, just go in there and put like a song that's most likely gonna 
pack the dance floor. Um, 70s, same thing. Modern pop, I kind of divide it up. Current is usually the current year and last year. So this is like 22, 23. I do like kind of the five years before that. And then I do like the 2010s, the 2000s. And then I've got these kind of other more specific ones. Um, but you, you, you know the music you play. You know your crowd. Your crates will probably be totally different than mine. But this is your system for it. So like if, if you go to like... Uh, Pop punk, you know, these are pop punk songs. They live in here. Uh, modern rock is kind of more alt rock, kind of some crossover with pop punk, I guess, but it's more like the the alt rock stuff. But um, just whatever works for you, the system is more important than the than the specifics. You you may not have a modern rock crate, but the idea that you can just go in here, this okay, so modern rock. Pop punk. There's are three different crates I have throughout my library. Scotty don't. Scotty doesn't know. Lives in all three of those crates. So if I'm in the modern rock crate, I'll find it. If I'm in the punk pop crate, I'll find it. If I'm in the emo dance crate, I'll find it. So that way I can have one copy of the song, but I can put it in three different places where I might want to play it. Um, and then kind of the last thing I mentioned these dance favorites. Uh, that's kind of like a safety valve. Usually when I'm mixing, I'm kind of going crate to crate and kind of like building the night. And I, I don't like to play too much in a row. I don't, I, some DJs I think do like a block of 80s songs, then a block of 90s. I'm more like, I just do a couple songs that kind of work together. Then I dial it back and I try to find something that bridges out of that. And I'm constantly moving from genres, which is why I've got all these crates. Once in a while though, it's just like, I want something I know is just going to like, build the energy. So dance favorites are kind of like tried and true classics. And it can be all, I'll have like YMCA in there and I'll have uh, Dr. Dre in there. It's just anything and everything that's just, you know, is going to pump up the energy. And then these last two, and the reason these three live, because like, you know, get out of dancing, these are in the, the main folder. It's just DJ crates. Bam. They're right there in the top level folder because um, they're the most important ones. You want that quick, you want to be able to jump to that in an emergency really quickly. Today's cocktail, that changes with every event. Those are requests that the client specifically made for a cocktail dinner time. And then today's event could be called today's dance, I suppose. Uh, those are the dance songs where they're like either some must plays or favorites. Uh, I don't adhere specifically to that unless they tell me they want me to. But I like to have it on hand because I'll play from it. And then I'll read the crowd and kind of move out of it. But I always want to be able to jump back in there and see how I can kind of reintegrate that. Because I want to sort of build the overall playlist around those requests. So it's like, you know, I want to have those easy access. So that's it. And then as far as Serato, it's just as simple of you go in Serato in the preferences. You check a box that says uh, something, read your iTunes or Apple Music. Basically, it says, you know... In, import that. And the nice thing is every time you start Serato, it will reread this. So any changes you make here at all will be uh, represented the when you open Serato. If you make the changes while you're running Serato, then they won't populate right away. You won't see the changes until you quit Serato and restart it. But I don't think people are doing music organization during a gig. So it's great that you can keep this up to date add songs, delete songs, move songs, change things. And every time you run Serato, you have the totally up-to-date version of your library. So that is the hopefully informative, exhaustive, how to use Apple Music. And I think this is hands down the best way to organize music for DJing. If you have any questions, whatever, just comments, anything, just reach out, comment, contact me. Hope this helps.